Um, I am very grateful to our uh, good friends at um, uh, the Geese College of Business, and in particular, Elizabeth Chaminsky, who's been a frequent uh, part of our professional development series in years past and is wonderful partners with us. So uh, we are very lucky here at Research Park. We couldn't do what we do without connecting uh, and it taking uh, full advantage of every opportunity that we have to engage with our career services colleagues across the community and in the university. And Elizabeth is one of our favorites. Don't tell anyone else, but I just did in public. So, um, and she here is here today to talk about LinkedIn techniques. And so I know that her title of her of this uh, talk is using LinkedIn in your job search, but I believe that LinkedIn has also become for many people, not just a tool that they use if they're looking for a job, but maybe if they're uh, building a business, if they are uh, looking to expand their networks because they are hiring themselves or for many other reasons. So there are lots of reasons to optimize. It's a LinkedIn, it's a great tool. And I'm really excited to hear what tips uh, Elizabeth says um, today, I am myself a very avid user of LinkedIn, but I know that every time I've listened to Elizabeth talk about it, I have learned something new too. So I hope that is the case here. And so Elizabeth, welcome uh, today and please take it away. Thanks, Laura. Um, and thanks, Kathy, for asking me to speak to you all today. Um, as Laura said, my name is Elizabeth Chminsky, and I'm one of the directors here at the Geese College of Business in the Career Services Office. Uh, for the past few years, I've been working with, with our residential graduate students. And then this year, this summer, I'm transitioning into the other side of what I would call our shop. Um, and I will be the director for corporate engagement, which is working with all the companies that come here to Geese and to campus to recruit both our undergraduate and graduate students. Um, so I've worked in career services for almost nine years, um, and I will say that, you know, I, I enjoy the job search. The job search is scary and overwhelming for many, uh, but when you really think about it, it's fun and exciting. You know, this is your chance to seek out new opportunities, to, to learn, to grow, and that's really what most of us you know, are looking to do over the, the decades that we're working. So I think the job search is fun, and LinkedIn is an incredible tool. Um, I'm, I'm of the generation that watched LinkedIn um, grow and really become the platform it is. I remember when I was in business school in the mid 2000s and LinkedIn had just started and they all told us to go in and create an account and I didn't really know what I was doing and then years later here I am at U of I and I've really come to really value, learn and understand what this platform is and how it can help you, you know, right from the beginning, not only with your job search, but really with your networking, how you connect with people, how you learn and how you understand how the business world uh, grows and develops and evolves. Um, and then LinkedIn has really expanded also. And I'll talk about LinkedIn learning as well, which is a phenomenal tool. Um, but so what I'll share is, is this is a presentation that we use with our students here at the business school. Um, it's not so much about how, um, how to build your profile, but it's more about how to start using it um, and, and put it to work. So it is focused on the job search, but a lot of what I'm gonna say is more focused for the passive job seeker or someone who's planning maybe to, to search in the future. Um, and it's what you can be doing now, because even though you're not actively on the job market, um, I'm assuming most folks, um, you know, you plan on working for the net for a while. Um, and so these are tools and tips and things that you can do because when you are on the job market, this stuff will come in handy. Um, I'm not totally paying attention to the chat, but Kathy said that she will. So if you do have a question for me, it might be easiest to, to put it in the chat and then Kathy or someone can stop me um, and I'll pause where I am in the presentation and I'm happy to take any questions you, know, you have during the presentation as it's related to the content. So to get started, um, there we go. Why is LinkedIn important? Um, it's important because it's huge. It's one of the, it is the premier professional social network. Um, it allows you to connect with millions of people across the world. Um, but as a someone who's part of the U of I community, um, it's a great way to, to really understand and see how you're connected to others here at U of I, um, and then throughout your entire life um, and how you're connecting with folks. Uh, you can do great company research on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great place. If you hear about an organization you've never heard about before, go to LinkedIn and you can learn a lot with just a few clicks. 
um, it's definitely the job search tool. It's one of the best job boards that is available. But then the, the professional brand is also a really important piece, you know, with social media and these different platforms. This is the space to really sell who you are as a professional and really analyze and, and observe, you know, what your skills are, how you compare to others in the industry, what you need to grow and develop so that you really can be seen as an expert and a professional um, in the space that you're working in. And then it's a great way to to organize your connection, you know, connections. Laura said she has 4,600 connections. Um, that's a lot of people, but it probably makes it really easy to find folks um, that you're looking for because you've got such a broad network and they're all your first connections, which is huge. So LinkedIn is just a really important tool from that professional networking standpoint, from that professional branding standpoint, and then on the job search. So I liked that Laura started by asking all of you to put your LinkedIn profiles in the, in the chat because that means you've probably been on your LinkedIn profile page within the past 10 minutes. So this first um, page here is, is really just a fun activity. It's a scorecard. So really quickly, you could look at these, each of these line items, you know, grab a piece of paper or a pen, and you can start to give yourself some points for what you do have in your profile. Um, and you might also get some ideas on some areas that you can um, improve on your profile. So I'll just pause for a second, give everyone a chance to look at these different items, and then give yourself, you know, one, two, three, or four points for the, the elements that you do have currently in your profile. And if you want to use the thumbs up feature, then I can see when folks are done with this page, because there is one more page. This is the last part, more about volunteer experience and some of the functionality and features that are at the bottom of your LinkedIn profile. Okay, we're gonna to go to the next slide. So the next slide, you should have um, takes a moment to tally up all of your points, and then you can see where you're at, what the assessment is. Um, I'm gonna assume most of you are probably in that uh, 20 to 30 range, but I'd say if you're above 25, you're doing pretty good. Did anyone get above 25 as you do your tallies right now? Laura did? I feel like it's kind of my job to like have a optimized LinkedIn. So I'm not a good example. So do not compare yourself to me. <laughs> we all just strive to be Laura. Um, Kathy will have these slides too. So if you didn't have enough time to, to do this activity, it's a fun thing to do, but so you can revisit this and um, assess your profile, but it'll give you some ideas on what you could do pretty quickly to help enhance your profile and just make it a better branding document so that when, or profile so that when folks do land on, on your page, they really understand who you are and what it is that you do. So I'm gonna first talk about the summary, which LinkedIn has changed and is now called the about section. Um, but this is really important. Uh, so if you don't have an about or a summary section, this would probably be the first thing I recommend that you do. And the reason is, is when someone goes to your LinkedIn profile, uh, this section, which is really like a paragraph or two paragraphs, is, is what they see on your page. They have to scroll down to read the rest of your content. So if this is filled out, it, it, it could be enough to grab their attention, and then they'll spend more time on your page and looking at your experience um, and your skill set. So this is just um, some suggestions. You wanna be short and concise. You know, typically I'd say two paragraphs. You know, this does a nice job um, over laying out to, to describe your current situation, you know, articulate, you know, what it is that your goals are, what are your skills? What is it that you're looking to do? What have you accomplished? And then depending on your preference, you know, you can include some personal information and interest in this summary or about section. Definitely make sure there's no spelling or grammar mistakes, but it is okay to use I statements. And this is where LinkedIn is actually really different from your resume. A resume is more formal and you would not use I statements on your resume, but you can on your LinkedIn profile. You know, this is a platform that's really meant to connect and engage um, others. So it's totally fine to use I statements. I don't recommend cutting and pasting really ever directly from your resume to LinkedIn. You definitely want to craft everything you put on here for LinkedIn and the LinkedIn audience. Uh, but if you don't have the about section, I'd make a priority to get that done. You can customize your LinkedIn profile address. So I was really quickly looking through some of the LinkedIn URLs that you put in the chat. And some of you have done this um, and some of you have not. So again, when we're finished with this presentation, you can go onto LinkedIn and you can see the links right here. 
where you can edit your URL and customize it. So if you have a very common name, you're gonna to have to be a little more creative, but if your name is a little more unique or less common, so like myself, I'm Elizabeth Chminsky on LinkedIn. It's very easy to tell someone what my, my URL is. Um, but if you haven't done this, please do. I can see that some of you have a, a you know, random combination of, of numbers after your name. So figure out how you can make that more customized. Why would you do this? You do it because it, from my perspective, because it looks nicer on your LinkedIn profile, I mean, on your resume, um, you can put that LinkedIn profile there on your resume and it looks really nice. And it's just easier for you and other people to remember. So it's, it's more concise. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit more about networking. So who to connect with? Um, when we talk with students in our office, this is always a space that they're a little unclear about. Um, and so I recommend you connect with real people. You connect with real people who you like, real people who you respect, and real people who you definitely want to keep in touch with and know. So this could be definitely your classmates and other students, professors, faculty members, uh, folks who work at the university, uh, like Laura and myself, um, recruiters, HR managers, um, alumni, other professionals. You know, if you are working part-time or full-time, your colleagues, um, anyone you know from, from the organizations that you're affiliated with. Um, and your friends, your friends and family. Um, in particular, you know, your friends and family are, they're out there working. You know, they know people who within their firms, they went to different universities. Don't look just at, at um, you know, who's around you today, but also think about your cousins and your family and friends, um, even like friends from high school or that you knew from childhood. They're great people to be connected with. Um, if you don't know someone, you don't need to connect with them unless you have some connection or affiliation. Maybe you went to the same summer camp, even though you weren't there at the same time. Maybe it is of a friend of a friend, someone who you haven't met before, but you know that they're a reputable individual. Go ahead and connect with them. But if it's someone that you can't articulate why they would be reaching out to you, then you can choose to not connect with them and it's totally fine. Um, the LinkedIn open networkers. So I just I told you to, to avoid those individuals, but don't you yourself fall victim of doing that. Don't just go on to LinkedIn and just connect with anyone just because they work at a company that you're interested in. Um, when you log into LinkedIn, LinkedIn will suggest people that you may or may not know. Don't just connect with everyone that LinkedIn tells you to connect with. Um, really, again, be strategic and be intentional. Um, and you, know, you can look at who your second level connections are in particular, because those are people who know people that you know directly. And so maybe those are individuals that you have more common interest with, or you're somehow loosely connected and you might want to connect with those individuals. But whenever you do that, you always must add a message. Um, LinkedIn is a little bit tricky because when you go to connect, it has that really generic let's connect message. I encourage you to always change that, always personalize it, always make it unique to yourself. Even if you're trying to connect with Laura or me, please personalize the message. Um, there are times that you know students or others affiliated with the university will send me that really generic message and I won't accept it because I don't really know who they are. Are they enrolled in the programs? You know, are they even a student here at U of I? I don't know. But then if you tell me that you're an incoming key student, then I'm much more likely to connect with you because I know who you are and you're part of this community that I'm part of. Um, if you are looking for connections, say maybe if you went to a different undergrad institution and you wanted to find other folks that went to that university, um, LinkedIn has a great search tool. So you can look for individuals who live in a certain city, went to a university, um, work at a certain company, are in a certain function, and you can start sorting people on LinkedIn and seeing how, who you're um, you know, one or two steps removed from. Um, this is really great when you are job searching. Um, or when you're just looking to gain knowledge or insight or better understand the industries that you're either working in or looking to work in. So it is pretty easy to find new connections and that's really the, the point of LinkedIn. Um, so use this functionality to the best of your ability. LinkedIn is a very strong and very nice alumni tool. So if you did go here, to, you are here attending U of I or you did go to U of I or you went to another university, um, you can go onto the university pages and start to really search where our alumni live, where they work, what they do, and it, it makes it really easy to find alumni. So if you haven't used this tool, um, definitely seek it out. 
Um, and if you have any questions, you know, any of the career services offices, we, this is a part, big part of what I find that we do is we're talking with students about how to, to use these tools and identify folks who they want to know and want to connect with. Typically it's professionals that they want to chat with to learn more about companies and industries. But if you are, um, you know, if you are hiring, Laura mentioned that, like if you are hiring, you can start to look at alumni or look at current students or alumni of the university and just check out their profiles and see what talent you can get from other institutions or other areas. So this is a really, really strong tool. And sometimes it's the most up-to-date alumni database that I know of. Um, these slides uh, just show some example uh, text that you could send um, in a message through LinkedIn. Again, these are examples. I don't think these messages are the most compelling or most interesting because they're just examples. Only you yourself can really craft a, a message that is compelling and that is gonna get someone excited to respond to you. I don't ever recommend you know, drafting a really generic couple sentences and then blasting that out to the 30 people that you found on LinkedIn. You really, really need to be thoughtful in the message that, messages that you send through LinkedIn. Make it very clear why you're reaching out um, what the point is and why it would be valuable to you or that individual for you guys to connect. Um, so this is this is an example and I'm not an example of the best um, message that could be sent. We don't do that. You have to craft your own messages, um, but it's a, a good example of a short and brief message. Um, and some of these are like pre-COVID. This, this presentation is not um, unique to this more virtual world that we're living in. You know, this is also thinking about like if you met someone a couple weeks ago at an event, how you would reach out to them through LinkedIn. And this is if you're on groups on LinkedIn, which I haven't talked about much, but I'm assuming most of you know that organizations and entities can have groups. And so you can join that group um, and then connect with those individuals that are part of the group. So like alumni groups, um, uh, alumni of different companies, that's actually really popular on LinkedIn is people who used to work at an organization but want to stay connected even though they've moved on to other opportunities. Um, even like groups from high schools have, have, have those types of groups. And then professional organizations, you know, depending on what industry you work in, there's definitely a professional organization or probably multiple organizations that have a group on LinkedIn. Um, and so you can connect with people through those tools. And then an example, if you just don't know someone, but you still want to connect with them, what you would say. Talk a little bit about job searching. Um, and this is again, tools that you can kind of be put in your back pocket and probably use in the future. Um, so LinkedIn has a, a jobs um, tab. So I'm sure you've all looked at it, but jobs is, is right there. Um, a big part of LinkedIn's business model is working with recruiters, um, both with search firms, worked with large corporations, um, with government organizations, nonprofits, private companies. I mean, every anyone who's doing recruiting in some capacity could be using LinkedIn um, and their Talent Connect um, product they offer to recruiters. So the jobs functionality or the jobs tab is definitely where you want to go because that will help you out. Um, searching jobs on LinkedIn, absolutely. I think LinkedIn's job board is great. Um, please understand that it has changed a little bit. So there are positions that are posted by recruiters. You know, companies are paying to post that position. LinkedIn is pulling jobs from other sites online and then pulling them into their, um, their job search. Um, but it is just a great place to go and see what current positions exist and who's hiring now. But it's also a great place if you're thinking that later on in the next few years, you want to go into a certain function or you don't really know what product development is, go to LinkedIn and start looking at product development jobs and get a sense of how it might be similar or vary in different companies or different areas. So it's a great place to just learn more about industry and learn more about functions if you're not actively seeking today. Um, so you can customize and manage um, your, your preferences in the jobs page. You can have saved searches, which is not new. I mean, most uh, job searching pages have saved searches, but you can update you know, what you're interested in. Um, you can indicate to recruiters you are interested. Uh, you can share on your profile that you're open to opportunities or open to work. Um, set up those email alerts, get emails, um, and then also you know, post a pitch and, and put yourself out there to the recruiters that you are interested in what you're looking for. 
So it's this functionality. If you go into your LinkedIn profile, um, open to work can see details and you can um, manage it all through this pencil. There we go. Okay. Um, and you can be more uh, customized in who sees that you're open to work. You can make it open to everyone or maybe it's just recruiters who are using that recruiter product. So if you are you know, working full-time and don't really want your employer to know that you're actively seeking or maybe passively seeking, LinkedIn does respect your privacy in that sense. Um, researching companies, I kind of already alluded to this, but all companies have a LinkedIn page. Um, they probably use it to share a lot of news and updates. So if you are interested in companies or a handful of companies, you can follow those organizations. You can get their news updates in your feed. Um, and then obviously you can explore and find out who works there, um, where they went to school and, and learn more about their job and if they're active or not on LinkedIn. And that's one thing to, to always remember when you're on LinkedIn is not everyone is active. Even though they have a profile, they might not be using it daily. Uh, they might really only log in periodically. So um, the extent of how folks profiles are built out or how active they are, is just an indicator of how active they, they choose to use social media, in particular, this LinkedIn product, this social media. One of the nice functions of, of LinkedIn is I like when people get promoted or um, the work anniversary. So if you're actively using LinkedIn and you scroll through, you can see which of your friends, you know, either work, did receive a promotion um, or if they've been at their company for 10 years and then you'll see everyone congratulates them. But it's nice to just get those updates um, and it helps to stay engaged and feel connected with people that you don't engage with or converse with on a daily basis. Um, so LinkedIn has a lot of new features and functionality. Um, you can manage a lot of your preferences. You can um, you know, change all the time who you wanna follow and unfollow, hide posts that aren't relevant, um, you know, re report any inappropriate content or make sure that you're not getting a lot of marketing or um, you know, spam that comes your way. So just make sure that periodically you're, you're um, going into this improve my feed section and, and making sure that LinkedIn is, is valuable to you and that you're getting the information that you want. So we talked about connections and, and who to connect with, but once you connect with someone, you know, what do you do? Um, so for some individuals, you know, you're just connected on LinkedIn and that's enough. Um, like all social medias, you can like and comment on folks' posts. Um, and you can, the, I think the real value is that you can really start to see who other people are connected with. In particular, if you're looking to have conversations with other professionals, um, if it is for informational interviews um, or just to, to talk with someone that you might be interested in either that company or just connecting with other alumni. LinkedIn does have this recommendation feature. So you can write recommendations for others either that you've worked with um, or that you might know. And that's a really nice thing to do. Um, and maybe if you are um, you know, in a job for a while, you just want to ask one of your colleagues, hey, would you write me a recommendation on LinkedIn? It's please ask people to do that. Everyone um, should be willing to, to help each other out and do this recommendation feature and functionality on LinkedIn. So if you haven't done that before, you know, find someone that you want to write a recommendation for and go ahead or ask someone to do it on your, um, for you on your page. Folks ask us a lot about LinkedIn premium um, and is it worth it? So this is the paid product. Um, and there's multiple different versions um, and, you know, for job seekers or for business professionals. Um, I don't know the answer to that when people ask us, um, you know, for students, I don't think you need to pay for LinkedIn at all. Um, but if, you know, you're a business professional or you're working in a certain function and, and you're really focused on, you know, moving up um, and improving your career, it might be worth it to invest in LinkedIn just to have more functionality. Um, so that's really something that really only you can decide. Um, but it, it, it has some additional features, um, in particular than the direct messaging, the in-mails, and you're able to send more messages. You can see more who's viewing your profile. You can be featured. Um, LinkedIn Learning, if you aren't affiliated with, with the U of I, but if you, you know, have a, a current university net ID, LinkedIn Learning is free to you, um, which I think is fantastic. So if you, if you, aren't, if you don't have that, you know, LinkedIn Learning could be really valuable. Um, but it might not. Um, if you ever get an option for a trial, sure, go ahead, try it out, and then you can make the decision. But it's hard for me to say yes or no that LinkedIn premium is, is valuable um, or worth it. It really depends on you and your situation. 
And then thinking about LinkedIn as a social media and engaging, um, LinkedIn's spent a lot of time investing um, in how to improve them as a social media platform and how to be more engaging. Um, so we'll get into that. But you know, the first thing is thinking about LinkedIn if you're not job seeking, if you're just using LinkedIn as a networking platform. Um, this builds your brand. This is part of your online reputation. So it's a really credible um, place to go for people to learn more about you and, and your professional reputation. Um, LinkedIn learning is great. The market research is fantastic. You know, you can learn a lot about industry through this platform. Um, it's ongoing networking um, and that you too, can, you can contribute and in, in post and in, in add comments and in, in content. Um, you know, it's different than some of the other social medias. You know, it's not personal. We don't need to know what you're doing every single day on LinkedIn. But if you read an interesting article or maybe an organization you're affiliated with has some interesting information to share, put it out there. Obviously, if you have a change in jobs or a new opportunity, put that on there. But people do appreciate, you know, connect. It, it gives you that sense of feeling connected. So I, people appreciate that to know what's going on with you professionally. Um, and you never know when you're going to need to connect with someone. Um, LinkedIn is obviously has a really well-developed mobile app and you can use hashtags just like other social medias You can get involved in the groups. Um, my reminder is just always remember this is a professional platform. Um, LinkedIn has done a really good job at making sure that that's the culture and part of the platform is that it is professional um, and it's really valuable because of that. And then lastly, this kind of like, like feature or functionality that, that the social media platforms have um, these are the current options when you um, engage with a post on LinkedIn, which are, I think they're very inclusive and, and people are using them in the right way. So it's really nice to have these different options. Um, the, the direct messaging is a fe feature that has really can come in handy because when you connect with someone, if, then you can send like a little message, but it's, it's, it has a character limitation. So once someone's the first connection, then you can send direct messages to them. But if you're trying to connect with someone who's not your first connection, who's a second or third connection, um, that can be hard because you, you don't have, you're not able to. Um, so that's the one place, you know, where that premium can come in handy. But the direct messages with first connections are great. I mean, it's, it's essentially email. Um, so that's one of the main reasons why you'd want to connect with someone as a first connection, because then you can message them, you know, whenever it's relevant or whenever you need to. Um, and so this is the end of what I have prepared to share with all of you. Um, I don't know if we got any questions during all of that, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have, you know, about using LinkedIn. Again, I come from the career services space, so I really view it much more in the in the career growth and professional networking space, but I'll answer anything that you um, is on your mind. Thanks, Elizabeth. I don't see any questions, but um, I have a question for you. So uh, what you you talked a lot about photos or including photos of your work or things in your profile. Do you have any recommendations or examples that you've seen of of ways to incorporate this? Yeah, so the main, when you talk about photos in the profile, um, everyone has a, a, a profile photo, which I would recommend that it's a professional and industry appropriate photo. Um, so I say industry appropriate because I see some really nice professional but creative photos that aren't aligned, you know, with the with the business suit and just kind of like the perfect headshot, but you'll, you'll need some type of professional photo as the profile. And then that background photo space is really nice because that you can use really anything um, that you feel passionate about or you feel really complements who you are. Um, you know, I've seen people use city backgrounds. I've seen people use really nice kind of blurred images um, or maybe it's something that's it's well designed and it's kind of um, you know unique. Um, so you can really use anything for that background photo. Just make sure it's a high quality and it looks nice. Um, and then depending on, you know, if you work more in the creative space, um, you can, you know, your activity, you can post different things that you've done. You can link it back to maybe a certain website or portfolio that you manage. Um, so you can put all of that in your profile that links back to other creative or interesting things that you've done, um, videos that you've made, whatever it might be. 
So we had a question about where to get a professional headshot. And actually, I'm just today working on scheduling. Uh, we haven't done this in a couple of years, but since we're now back in person, we will be scheduling a research park professional photo day. So to get you all those uh, headshots, but um, if you, that probably won't happen for a, a several more weeks. So if there are um, you know, other ways to do this. Honestly, you know, I think a just using your port, having somebody, if you have an iPhone that has the portrait feature, you can take some very nice portrait uh, photos using the portrait feature that are good enough until you can get a more quote unquote professional version. Yeah, I would agree with that, Laura, that with the computers that we all carry around in our pockets, you can accomplish this just fine. Um, I recommend just not using like a cropped photo, like don't take a photo and then just crop your headshot out of it. And you can tell that it's like at an event and there's people next to you. You know, the photo that you use really should meant to be a profile photo um, or a headshot. Uh, I saw you had some examples of um, ways to connect with people. Can you give an example of maybe something you've seen that wasn't so cool that you've seen when people have connected? Yeah, so um, one example that we get often in our office, and I'm always a little embarrassed for the students that send this, um, you know, we're serving students and students will send very formal messages and sometimes use um, titles that aren't correct. So like, I'll get a message that's like, dear professor, and then it's just something generic. And it's not me, I'm not a professor. And so we get that a lot, like myself and other folks um, in the college, that um, individuals are sending much more formal <laughs> messages or connection requests and not using the correct titles. And that um, doesn't go over well. I just, it, you know, it's like you haven't looked at the profile first. Yeah, Emily says, I've encountered a lot of people trying to connect with me and then trying to sell me things. Yeah, I, I get this a lot. Like, oh, use this service or, you know, yeah. I want to meet with you to discuss this thing I want to sell you. It's like, yeah, no. Um, anything that you've noticed, Elizabeth, maybe since, you know, due to the pandemic that has shifted or ways that people are using this differently a little bit because of the pandemic? Anything you can think of? Um, I think recruiters are very active on LinkedIn and they're looking for passive job seekers. Um, LinkedIn has given recruiters insight into who works where and what roles, what type of experiences that they have. Um, and you know, the best candidates aren't necessarily actively seeking. So LinkedIn has really provided us with a platform for recruiters to seek out the right person and, you know, present you to opportunities. And I think that has increased with the pandemic because recruiting is happening virtually almost 100% now. Um, and so recruiters are actively seeking people with the right list of experience and, and right up, um, right skill set. And you never actually apply. You don't have to apply to the job. Like they'll find you on LinkedIn. And that was always the case, but I think it's really amplified during this. Uh, I see a question. Can could I text managers regarding potential job opportunities at their department? I assume message, you mean message through LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm gonna assume message as well. Um, you can do that. Um, I would not do that without proper research and guidance. So there should, you should understand who you're reaching out to if they're the appropriate person and really thoughtfully crafted what it is that you want to ask them. Um, LinkedIn makes this kind of easy though, because um, there is a functionality or a feature where you can see who the job poster was. And they're doing that intentionally. They want you to know I'm the person responsible for filling this position. So absolutely you can reach out to them, but you know it's a competitive uh, job market. So you wanna make sure that you're putting your best foot forward and really intentional with what you say. Um, but yes, LinkedIn is that platform that you can message people about specific jobs that they have in their, um, either that they're recruiting for or in their department. See, the next question is about an informational interview. Um, you absolutely can do this. I recommend uh, talking with alumni first or individuals who are doing the job or at least working in the function you're interested in. Um, because you really need, your, the whole purpose of an informational interview is to gather information and knowledge. And so you really are going to an informational interview with you know five or 10 questions in your back pocket that if you can get the right insight, 
um, you'll know how to prepare your resume and cover letter so that it's more aligned with that position and you know what you're applying to. Um, but that is the tool really of LinkedIn is to identify who could be the right people to reach out to and ask them for 20 minutes of their time to, to have this informational interview. But when you do an informational interview, you are not asking anyone to refer you. You're not asking anyone to get you a job. You are there to collect information about a position or a company or a department or a type of role. And I will add that any, if any of you are students on this campus and you're going to do exactly this, this is where I would recommend chatting with career services first um, because you really only get one shot. And so you want to make sure that what you're sending over and what you're asking for um, is, is appropriate. And then you, you should get a great response and have a good opportunity to, to do an informational interview. Well, if we don't have any other questions and if the, and if there are people who want to come off mute, of course, you're welcome to do that in the next second or two, we will wrap this up. Um, Elizabeth, did you drop your, uh, your um, LinkedIn? I don't think I did, I yeah. can do that because I have the chat open now. So now we can see who's paying attention. You can connect with me, but you have to write a personalized message. That's right. So write a personalized message. Um, definitely uh, communicate with um, the folks who've been on here and we will, uh, we are very excited to see those optimized LinkedIn profiles and hopefully they will help you achieve your goals, whether it's broadening your network, uh, making some connections with people in some industries that you're interested in, or maybe it's just as Elizabeth said, personal branding as well. Um, before we go, we do want to, uh, to um, if you are a Research Park intern this summer, we just have published our list. So if you want to get on our newsletter list, here is the link to sign up for that. So you can find out about all the fun events that are happening both in person as, as well this summer. What a novelty and as well as virtual. So. Uh, thanks so much, Elizabeth. We will be here next week, and I apologize. I forgot what our topic is next week in our professional development series, but we look forward to seeing many of you then. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.